life. I'm Anastasia Chatska, a fashion designer with over 20 years of experience and a sewing educator. And I'm really excited you're here to share another sewing adventure with me today. Welcome to Sewing Anastasia, and today we are going to transform this ugly 90s trench coat into a super sexy gown. So keep watching to see how we do this. This project is a part of Upcycling September, where I'm transforming 30 upcycles in 30 days. So make sure you follow the hashtag Upcycling September on Instagram and social media. And if you want to see all 30 upcycles, head on over to Sewing Anastasia on Instagram, where I'm posting a new upcycle every single day in stories, posts, and reels. If you're not already a subscriber to Sewing Anastasia, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when all the new videos come out. And if you're already a subscriber following along on my sewing adventures, thank you so much for following me. So I'm always seeing these giant leather trench coats at the thrift store when I'm thrifting, and it's so much leather for like five bucks. And I'm always like, what can I do with this besides just completely rip it up and use it for leather? Well, I think I'm going to make this into a super sexy dress. I'm really picturing this double-breasted lapel dress, really fitted, no sleeves. Maybe we put a razor back on it, maybe we don't. Um, so I'm really picturing this super sleek leather dress, leaving it the same length. So we're not even going to shorten it. We're going to keep the integrity of this coat and really just make it hot. The first thing we need to do is tailor this jacket up. So let's turn it inside out, keep it on the dress form, and get some pins in it so that way we can tailor it up. Before we start pinning up the jackets, I'm going to rip out the lining. So I want to be able to see the seams over here, but they're inside of the jacket because we've got a lining. So to make this process really simple for tailoring because it's such a big garment, I really want to be able to see those seams. So I'm going to fully rip out the lining and then we can work with just the leather. And then what we're going to do is go back and tailor up the lining the same way that we did the outside fabric. So for now, I'm going to rip out the lining and work with the leather. Okay, so I'm gonna seam rip out all this lining. Now we have the lining of the body of the jacket removed so that way we can really see all these inner seams on the jacket that we can use for tailoring it up. And the first thing I want to do, like always, is make sure I'm pinning down center front or in this case where the overlap is for the buttons so that way I know where my center line is and I'm not going to be taking in something too much or not enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put a pin into where this buttonhole is on this side and where the button fell off on the other side. And we're going to pin that down and then just straighten it out a little bit. I'm also gonna put some pins in at the shoulders so they don't move while I'm pinning them later. Right in the seam there. Okay, we're gonna be careful to keep this overlapped while we're taking it in and it's looking pretty good. So now what we need to do is take in the sides, maybe put some darts in it, and really just go to town tailoring this up and then sew it up. This jacket has two bust pockets. I'm gonna end up sewing them shut. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut away all the extra fabric in the inside for the bust pockets because we're just not gonna need this. So I'm gonna cut away the pocket bag. Goodbye, less fabric is always great. Here we go. And now when we turn it right side out, we can go ahead and sew this up so we don't have a hole here. So I have a pin in the leather at the side seam because I want to keep this jacket balanced. And because it is leather, I don't want to fill it with a ton of pins to make little marks in it. So I'm going to kind of use a draping technique where I'm draping it over to the side seam and then I'm going to mark it with this chalk so I know where the side seam's at for sewing later. And so you wanna make sure you're keeping this balance and don't worry about all this extra here. We're going to be taking that out of this seam right here. So now what we need to do is work our way around the dress form and the body of it and chalk up all the extra so we know where our new sewing lines are going to be. So I'm going to drape my fabric smoothly up the side of the dress form 
I am going to put another pin there. I'm gonna go ahead and continue marking my side seam. Now this has a big dropped armhole on it. So we're gonna wanna be careful when we're working with this. We wanna make sure it's staying nice and smooth up into the armhole. I'm also gonna put another pin up here and we're gonna keep chalking up the side seam. And what we wanna do is find out where's our arm plate in here. So we need to know where to make our new armhole regardless of what kind of seams are already here. So I want to pin all, wow, all the way up here. So we're gonna come all the way up here and put another pin. So we're gonna drape all the way up to the armhole and just keep chalking your side seam all the way up to the armhole. And then you're gonna wanna mark where your arm plate is. So we're gonna work all the way around the armhole and mark right on the outside of our arm plate so we know where to make our new armhole. You're gonna do this front and back. Right now I'm just working the front, so I'm just gonna mark the front armhole. And so now I've got the front armhole and I have a side seam. So now what we need to do is take all the excess out of the seam that's already here on the jacket. So for this one, I'm going to pull it so it's nice and flat on both sides and I'm going to chalk. So I'm gonna hold it and chalk where I'm pinching it because we have leather and I wanna avoid using pins as much as possible. So we're gonna blend that right into the pocket down there and then we're gonna take this and blend it right into the pocket up here. And we really just need to mark one side as long as you're holding it nice and even because we're gonna sew it nice and flat together when we sew it up. So we have the side seam mark, the armhole, and the excess in the front. And the rest of it on the bottom is looking pretty good right now. So now we're gonna turn and do the back side. Actually, before I move to the back, I can't forget to chalk all the way down the side seam because we're going to need to take in the side seam all the way down. There we go. Now I have a rough line of where I need to take this in all the way down to the hem. I have center back pin, so that way I'm not shifting it when I'm pulling it to tailor it. And now I'm going to pull my jacket all the way over to the side seam and mark the side seam. And I also have a pin right here because I marked roughly where I think I'm going to want a dart. But first I'm gonna pull the jacket over to the side seam, feel for that side seam and go ahead and mark that. And I'm gonna work my way up the body first. This is real heavy, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin out here. And I wanna mark all the way up to the arm plate. So I'm gonna keep on going. If you need to, you can unpin the front because we already have it marked. And here's my arm plate. So horizontal line and then vertical, and now let's go ahead and mark all the way around our armhole. We've got a little gather in here, that's okay. I'm not worried about that right now. Still just wanna mark the armhole. Okay, so we have the armhole marked all the way to the tip of the shoulder, around, down the side seam, and now we're going to continue down that side seam. And then this line is just gonna come all the way down the dress and we'll even that out later with a ruler. I'm gonna be putting a dart in the back of this dress so that way it hugs the body nice and smooth. And naturally this dart is wanting to curve and I'm fine with that. I'm gonna go with that because I don't want to have any wrinkles or bumps in this. And so if it's laying nice and flat, we can totally have a curved dart. There is no problems with that at all. So we are just going to hold it together like we did on the front. And we are just going to chalk right where the, I pinch it. And we're just gonna blend this all the way up to the top. So you can see where this fish eye dart is going to be created. And this fabric is so stiff, it's just kind of holding it in place anyways without pins. So we're gonna be starting at the butt, working up to the waist, and going up to the top of the shoulder. 
and that's going to tailor this really nice on that side. When I'm upcycling, I'm creating a dart and tailoring something, you really want to go with the natural flow of the fabric. Sometimes fabric has been stretched because it's been worn or maybe it wasn't even cut on the grain line. So you don't want to force anything. You just want to go with what feels natural and looks good. Next, I'm going to be cutting off most of the extra on this side so that way I can really see how it's transforming to see if I need to do any other small tweaks. But when I'm cutting it off, I'm not cutting to that chalk line because we need to leave extra for seam allowance. And I'm going to be chalking on perfect seam allowance when we go over to the table and lay it down flat. So we're just cutting off one side of the jacket right now. We're going to be doing the other side of the jacket when we take it over to the table. I'm going to be cutting over about an inch from my chalk line to give myself some room for air and really I'm doing this just so I can see how we're tailoring this up and it's just so much easier when you don't have all this bulk. Look at all that extra we just cut off. Now that we have the jacket laid out flat on the table, I'm going to use my rulers to true up the lines and draw on the seam allowance precisely. And then we're going to flip it over to the other side and use it as a pattern to cut off the excess on the other side. So you can see our chalk lines when we're draping it on the dress form. We want to take our ruler and put it along that line and true it up. And true it up means just straightening it out. And now once we have that line straight, we want to take the half inch mark on our ruler and line it up with that chalk line. And then we're gonna draw our seam allowance on the outside of it. And now I have a cutting line. Now I know this outside line is my cutting line and this is my half inch seam allowance. And this line here is going to be my sewing line. And here's my dart for the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and just line up the ruler with the top and the bottom of it and straighten it out. Next, I'm gonna move on to the bottom half of the dress and then I'm gonna do the back. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. We're just gonna straighten out all the lines and add seam allowance. Now that we have our seam allowances all drawn and our lines all trued, it's time to cut off that extra. So you wanna cut on the edge of that seam allowance line that you just chalked out. Remember to cut on the outside of your seam allowance line. Now it's time to cut off all the extra on the other side. To make this process super simple, we are going to fold our jacket over in half and just cut off the extra. So we're gonna use this side as a pattern, folding it at center back. It's a lot of fabric to work with. And now I'm gonna get some weights and we're gonna weight it down and you can see all of this extra fabric here that we're going to have to cut off. And since this one already has seam allowance in it, we don't have to worry about adding seam allowance to the other side. I have my jacket all weighted down and I am ready to cut this. A little nerve wracking because there is no going back. So I'm gonna be using a rotary cutter and just following the edge of the top piece of leather. So I'm gonna get to the corner and stop and then relay out. So we can see, whew, that's gone. Okay. We just finished the back and now I have the front nice and laid out and we're gonna cut that extra off too. Now I have the front and the back cut and it's time to move on to the armhole. So we have it all laid out and it's time to cut. So we got the dress all chopped up and now it's time to start sewing it up. 
First I'm going to sew up the side seams and then try it on and see where the darts are and make sure they're in the right spot. Because it's leather, there's no seam ripping. There's no going back. Once you punch a hole in that leather, it's done. When sewing leather, it's always a good idea to double check your seams and make sure they're going to line up. So I double checked all my seams where I want them to line up and we're looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this up. I have a leather needle in my sewing machine and I am all set to sew up these side seams. So I'm gonna sew them up at half inch seam allowance. So let's do it. I have my right sides together and I'm all ready to sew. So we sewed together our seam and it is looking great, you guys. It sewed the leather so nice. If you need some tips on sewing leather on a regular sewing machine, make sure you check out my video on tips for sewing leather. Now let's sew up the other side and try this baby on and see where we need those darts to go. So this is the progress that we have so far on the jacket. It's looking so much better already, but we still have a little ways to go. So you can see getting rid of all that extra has really made a difference. But we're gonna turn it inside out, put it back on the dress form and double check our dart placements before we sew them and see if we need to take in the side seams anymore as well. So when I was holding it together where the darts were originally, I just didn't like how the fit was laying on the dress form. And I just felt like when I was taking it in at center back, it was just laying so much nicer. I've decided that I would just like to take it in and center back to create the shape in the back and not put the darts on the side. So the fun thing about upcycling or the annoying thing about upcycling is it's a forever changing process as you're taking some something in, trying it on, checking out the fit. Sometimes things change. So for instance, this one has changed. So we're gonna go ahead and take it in center back and I've already marked where I would like to take it in for center back, right where this chalk line is. So let's go sew up center back. When we start this, we need to start in the seam that already exists, backstitch and then blend out. So this needs to be a nice smooth transition. <laughs> When we get to the end, we have to blend back into the seam that's already there. We have it all tailored up and it is looking great. But now I'd like to do something with the armholes here. I think I would like to open up the arm into a point shape and then we'll finish the edge with a bias facing. So now I'm going to chalk on the new shape that I'm creating up here. I'm just gonna blend this into the armhole. We're gonna come out here to the neck so that way the collar covers it. So it's kind of like an open shoulder. And we're gonna turn this around to the back and I'm gonna open this up in the back to make it just a little sexier. And then we'll blend this into the armhole as well. So we're gonna cut off the extra leather here and then we're gonna use that extra as a pattern on the other side so that way we cut off the exact same amount on this side as we did on this side. So exactly the same process as before. Okay, so let's cut right where that new chalk line is. So you can see the two pieces that I cut off on both sides of the armhole look just about identical. And you can see how this transformed our armhole. So now what we're gonna do, because it's leather, we don't need to finish the edges, we just need to turn it under and top stitch it down. So I have it folded a quarter inch up into the inside and I'm gonna top stitch it down. Just gonna keep turning it as I'm sewing. Thank you. 
Look at how nice this top stitch looks around the armhole. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. We have one last step and that is sewing on some buttons. So I found some new buttons to, woo, found some new buttons to replace those old buttons, which are a little fancier. So we have four buttons to sew on and then we can try this dress on and check out the transformation. If you don't know how to sew on a button, make sure you check out my video on sewing buttons. Here we go, time to sew up some buttons. Okay, we are all done with the buttons. We'll notice this is the inside of the jacket. I have a backing button on this so that way the top button doesn't pull through the delicate leather fabric. We are finished with our buttons and they look awesome. So it is time to try on this new dress. We did it! We finished the transformation from the super frumpy jacket to the super cute dress. I just love thrifting and upcycling garments. It is so much fun to see the transformation come alive. I love the new armholes on it. I love how it's nice and fitted now, right to the body like a glove, so nice. I love the back armhole, it opens up a little bit, and we still kept the integrity of the jacket by leaving the nice lapel and the double-breasted look. Thanks so much for watching Sewing Anastasia today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will get back with you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this transformation, make sure you give it a thumbs up, give it some applause, and leave a comment down below. I'd love to know what you thought about it. And don't forget to send me pictures of your upcycles this month. Hashtag them upcycling September and at Sewing Anastasia on Instagram. And make sure you follow me on Instagram at Sewing Anastasia so that way you can see all the upcycles that I'm creating this month. One every single day. 30 up cycles in 30 days. And if you're not already a subscriber to Sewing Anastasia, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when all the new videos come out. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for following along on my sewing adventures. Also, I'm now teaching sewing classes in my design studio in Chicago, and you can check out the full list of classes at SewingAnastasia.com. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.